जय गोपी जाना वल्लभ गिरिवर धारी यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यमुना तीरावन यमुना तीरावन चरी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी 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 जय ओम विष्णुपाद परम हंस परिब्राज कचार अष्टोदरक से श्रीमद हिज डिवाइन ग्रेश लभय चरणारविंद भक्ति वेदांत गोस्वामी महाराज प्रभुपाद की इस कौन भी बड़ी संस्थापक आचार्य शिल प्रभुपाद की जय ओम विष्णुपाद परम हंस परिव्राज कचार अष्टोदर से श्रीमद डिवाइन ग्रेस श्रीला भक्त सिद्धांत सरस्वती ठाकुर प्रभुपाद की अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की नामाचार्य श्रील हरदास ठाकुर की प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिवा सदि गौर भक्त वृंद की श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गो गोपीनाथ श्याम कुंड राधा कुंड श्री गिरि गोवर्धन की ब्रजभूमि श्री वृंदावन धाम की पुरुषोत्तम क्षेत्र श्री जगन्नाथपुरी धाम की नवद्वीप मायापुर धाम की गंगा माई की जमुना माई की भक्ति देवी की कृष्ण भक्ति प्रदायिनी श्रीमती तुलसी महारानी की कलिग पावन हरिनाम संकीर्तन की हरे कृष्ण महामंत्र की श्रील प्रभुपा ट्रांसनेटल बुक डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन की श्री श्री रुक्मिणी द्वारकाधीश की आई गौर प्रेमानंदे ऑल ग्लोरिस टू असम्बल डिबोटिस ऑल ग्लोरिस टू असम्बल डिबोटिस ऑल ग्लोरिस टू असम्बल डिबोटिस ऑल ग्लोरिस ऑल ग्लोरिस टू श्री गुरु एंड श्री गौरांग ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम अज्ञानतिमरंध से ज्ञानांजन शलाकया चक्षुरोन्मृदम्यनतस्म श्रीगुरव नम नम ओं विष्णुपादाय कृष्ण प्रेष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्तिपदात स्वामीनतनाम नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चातारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासदि गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद्भागवतम कैंटू थ्री चैप्टर ट्वेंटी थर्ड चैप्टर एंटाइटल्ड 
Devahuti's Lamentation, text 11. Tatreti Krityam Upashiksha Yathopadesham Yenaisha Me Karishito Atiri Atiram Atiram Shaya Atiri Atiri Ram Shaya Atma Siddheta Te Krita Manaha Bhava Dharshitayaha Dinaha Tat Isha Bhavanam Sadrisham Vichakshva Tatreti Krityam Upashikshayathopadesham Tatreti Krityam Upashikshayathopadesham ये नैश में करशितो अतितिर रम्ष यात्मा सिध्येत तेक्रत मनो भव धर्षिताया देनस्त देश भवनम सद्रिशं विचक्ष्व Tatreti Kritya Mupashikshaya Thopadesham Ye Naisha Me Karshita Oh Atitir Ramshayatma Siddheta Tekrita Mano Bhavadhar Shitaya Dhenastha desha bhavana sadrisham vichakshva Tatreti krityam upashikshaya thopadesham Yenaisha me karshito atitiram shayatma Siddheta tekrita mano bhava dharshitaya Dhenastha desha bhava nam sadrisham vichakshva Ladies,
तत्र इन दैट इति कृत्यम व्हाट इज नेसेसरी टू बी डन उपशिक्ष परफॉर्म यथा अकॉर्डिंग टू उपदेशम इंस्ट्रक्शन इन स्क्रिप्चर ये न बाय विच एश दिस मे माय करशित इमेसिएटेड अतिरि रम्श या ड्यू टू इंटेंस पैशन नॉट बीइंग सेटिस्फाइड आत्मा बॉडी सिद्धेत इट मे बी रेंडर्ड फिट ते फॉर यू कृत एक्साइटेड मन भव बाय इमोशन हर्षिताया हु एम स्टक दीन पुअर तत् देर फोर ईश ओ मै डियर लॉर्ड भवनम हाउस सदृशम सूटबल विचक्षव प्लीज थिंक ऑफ ट्रांसलेशन एंड परपोर्ट बाय हिज डिवाइन ग्रेशला ए सी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी प्रभुपाद देवहूति कंटिन्यूड माई डियर लॉर्ड आई एम स्टक बाय एक्साइटेड इमोशन फॉर यू देर फोर काइंडली मेक वॉट अरेंजमेंट्स मस्ट बी मेड अकॉर्डिंग टू द स्क्रिप्चर्स सो दैट माई स्किनी बॉडी इमेशिएटेड थ्रू अनसेटिस्फाइड पैशन मे बी रेंडर्ड फिट फॉर यू Also, my Lord, please think of a suitable house for this purpose. Purport. The Vedic literatures are not only full of spiritual instruction, but are also instructive in how to prosecute material existence very nicely, with the ultimate aim of spiritual perfection. Devhuti asked her husband, therefore, how to prepare herself for sex life according to the Vedic instructions. Sex life is especially meant for having good children. The circumstances for creating good children are mentioned in Kama Shastra, the scripture in which suitable arrangements are prescribed for factually glorious sex life. Everything needed is mentioned in the scriptures. What sort of house and decorations there should be? What sort of dress the wife should have? how should be she should be decorated with ornaments scents and other attractive features etc with these requisites fulfilled the husband will be attracted by her beauty and a favorable mental situation will be created the mental situation at the time of sex life may then be transferred into the womb of the wife and good children can come out of that pregnancy here is a special reference to devahuti's bodily features because she had become skinny she feared that her body might have no attraction for kardama she wanted to be instructed how to improve her bodily condition in order to attract her husband sexual intercourse in which the husband is attracted to the wife is sure to produce a male child but sexual intercourse based on attraction of the wife for the husband may produce a girl that is mentioned in the ayurveda when the passion of the woman is greater there is a chance of a girl's being born when the passion of the man is greater then there is a possibility of a son devahuti wanted the passion of her husband to be increased by the arrangement mentioned in the kama shastra she wanted him to instruct her in that way and she also requested that he arranged for a suitable house because the hermitage in which kardam muni was living was very simple and completely in the mode of goodness and there was less possibility of passions being aroused in his heart nehayat karma dharmaya na viragaya kalpate na tirthapada sevaya jeevan api mrtopisah mother devahuti expresses to kardam muni that he once karma does not lead to dharma and once dharma does not lead to vairagya and vairagya does not lead to bhakti then one's life is wasted 
and so she explains that one who does not get opportunities for Krishna consciousness is unfortunate but one who gets opportunities for practice of Krishna consciousness and still does not utilize those opportunities that person is most unfortunate and so she says Sayam Bhagavata Nunam Vanchito Mayaya Dridham Yattat Vimuktidam Prapya Na Mumukshaya Bandhanat She says that I got the opportunity of being in a spiritual family, being the daughter of Swayam Bhuva Manu. I got the opportunity to hear instructions about Lord Vishnu. I got the opportunity to have a devotee husband like Kardama Muni. But I did not utilize this opportunity for spiritual instructions and for de devotional progress and therefore I am very unfortunate and so she is requesting Kardama Muni to at least bestow a son who would be the cause of her spiritual advancement and spiritual progress this particular section describes about the sanskaras or the impressions which can be created within our mind, within our heart by following various practices. When Krishna appears in Gokul, uh, appears in Mathura and then is transferred to Gokul, at that time when Nanda Maharaj sees that a son is born because Vasudeva has transferred Krishna with Yogamaya, Nandastu Atmaja Uppanne Jata Lado Mahamanaha Aruhya Vipran Vedagyan Snataha Shuchi Alankratan. So the first description about Lord Krishna's birth in Gokul is Nanda Maharaj is in so much of ecstasy that he calls upon all the Brahmanas to engage in rituals to create the proper sanskaras for the newborn boy. Krishna. So sanskaras by definition mean that which creates transformation in the imprints upon the mind and therefore the various sanskaras are very powerful to be able to transform the impressions from millions of lifetimes the way we seek pleasure. It is described in the Patanjali Yoga Sutra that habit is defined as the previous memory of an experience of pleasure. Whatever kind of pleasure we have obtained in the past, the memory of that is what impels us to engage in that activity again to seek that pleasure. So memory of a previous experience of pleasure is what is defined in the Shastras as habit and therefore sanskaras basically mean changing or transforming the source of that pleasure from something connected to gross sense gratification to something which is more spiritual and transformative and that's what the sanskaras actually do and so when Krishna is born Nanda Maharaj calls all these Brahmanas to engage in rituals and then the verse describes the various ways in which transformation actually happens. Different things become agents for transformation. And so the verse says, Kalena snana shauchabhyam samskare tapasejjaya shudhyantidane santushtya atmatma vidyaya that Kalena, when you have mountains and uh, trees which are right there in nature, how do you actually transform or cleanse things which are open, standing in nature? You cannot go and wash all those mountains and all those trees which are standing. So the method of cleansing of items in nature is kalena by time it gets cleansed when the seasons change when rains come 
then automatically it gets cleansed kalena how does the human body gets cleansed snana the method of cleansing the human body is by taking bath right and it's a very important uh, method because even that is sometimes taken for granted i remember when i was in hostel some of my friends would not take bath for months and suddenly you would see them looking very fresh on a sunday and say you're looking very fresh and happy what happened you took a bath today so snana is the basic method by which the mode of ignorance and passion is removed from this body shaucabhyam how are objects cleansed like clothes or utensils vessels is by using a cleansing agent like soap or mud or ash or something like that then how is birth purified birth is purified or the impressions of last lives are purified by sanskare by doing sanskare by samskara and that sanskara is this method by which all kinds of impressions from the past lives are transformed how are the senses purified senses are purified by tapasya tapasa by denying pleasure to the senses the senses have a tendency to connect with the sense objects but when we deny that and say no raga dvesha vimuktaishtu vishayan indresh charan atma vashyer vidhyatma prasadam by doing that by denying the senses the pleasure one actually uh, engages in tapasya like some devotees approached shri la prabhupad and said that there is a night club which opens at 9 at night and goes on till 4 in the morning it's a great opportunity for book distribution please give your blessings that we can go and distribute books all night prabhupad said please do go but make sure you come back also <laughs> because the previous habits of indulgence of the senses with sense objects is such that you cannot just forget that it has a pull so tapasa means denying the senses connection with the sense objects ijjaya how are various objects purified like for example flowers or food when it is used in worship the flower is growing in the garden it's like any other flower you take that flower and offer it to krishna immediately so many devotees are trying to get one of those flowers why it has become now worshipable because it has been offered ijjaya how is wealth purified shuddhyanti danai by engaging in charity when we give in charity wealth is purified that is known as dana datavyam iti yat danam diyate anupakarane deshe kale cha patre cha tad danam satvikam smritam you give in charity wealth is purified like one of my friends was a very very wealthy businessman came to me and he said i have so much of wealth i have so much of wealth it is like water in ocean but the ocean water is salty and because it is salty it does not quench my thirst and all this wealth doesn't quench my thirst but i see that gorang prabhu you are chanting hare krishna you are doing bhakti you have the sweetness of bhakti in your heart it is like well water water in the well is sweet and deep can you give me a few drops of your well water i said sure please take few drops of my well water and you can give me few drops of your ocean water <laughs> <laughs> the guy disappeared for next 6 months <laughs> he was paranoid that i'll force a check out of him you know so deshe kale cha patra cha one businessman came to prabhupada and said Swami ji I got one factory in Jaipur one factory in Delhi one factory here one factory there but so many problems I'm not able to sleep at night Prabhupada said give the factories to us to manage you sleep peacefully <laughs> And then Prabhupada said many times people feel that 
the wealth i have will be the cause of my joy and pleasure but it is actually that which is disconnected when when the golden deer was attracting sita devi and sita devi told lord ram please go and get that deer lord ram left sita devi and went behind that deer so the acharyas say when lord ram knew that sita will be in a vulnerable state why did he go because the moment the soul decides that a priority for me in my life is not lord ram's service but something else apart from ram at that time the lord leaves the lord leaves allows us to engage in fulfilling our desire and therefore the whole idea of lakshmi is to reconnect with the lord through dana lakshmano lakshmi sampanno bahir prana eva para sarva priyakarastasya ramasya api sharirata the brother of lord ram is known as lakshman who is basically the meaning of lakshman is lakshmi sampann one who is filled with lakshmi what lakshmi the wealth of seva under the lotus feet of lord ram so therefore shuddhyanti danai through dana through charity one actually transforms one's consciousness and overcomes greed obsession proprietorship covetousness we overcome by giving on a regular basis and then how do we how do we cleanse our mind the mind is cleansed by santushtya by the feeling of satisfaction when we have the satisfaction then the mind is cleansed and satisfaction is connected with understanding that yes whatever opportunities have been given have been given for serving krishna and shri prabhupada says satisfaction basically arises when one simply is willing to follow and serve the will of the lord through that one experiences satisfaction shri prabhupada saw that one of his disciples was supposed to be going out and preaching but is still sitting in vrindavan and this devotee also was thinking i started iskon in this country i started iskon in this country i have started iskon in this country and i have only been moving around and traveling like anything now it is time for me to go deep into my bhakti and stay in vrindavan and do my bhajan and shila prabhupad may come and tell me go here go there i am not going to follow that now i am going to now focus on my spiritual life stay in vrindavan so prabhupad saw that this person was supposed to leave in a couple of weeks he still around and after a month or so prabhupad approached him and said hey you are still in vrindavan and this devotee said prabhupad vrindavan is so divine vrindavan is so attractive Vrindavan is so pleasurable Prabhupada said Vrindavan is to please Krishna not for your pleasure He looked at Srila Prabhupada and said what do you want me to do Prabhupada said I want you to go out and preach that's your seva you can't be sitting here in Vrindavan and this devotee looked at Srila Prabhupada and said I have already established Krishna consciousness in so many difficult countries powerful countries where will i go like there is no other place is kind of covered everywhere where will i go where do you want me to go prabhupa said go to sri lanka and he was thinking sri lanka and he looked at prabhupa and said sri prabhupa sri lanka is a very small country like telling that it is below my standard sri lanka is a very small country so prabhupa said then go to pakistan he thought for some time and he said i think sri lanka is better <laughs> and then he goes to sri lanka and there he meets you know somebody who is a rationalist and then he is making all these arguments for atheism and this devotee goes and counteracts that based on whatever he has heard from shri la prabhupad and shri la prabhupad is so pleased with him that he actually publishes that in life comes from life 
and so many times we may not realize that by doing this particular service this is what we are going to get and we get confused and we may not really have the idea of the alignment between the Lord's will and my will and therefore many times we feel dissatisfied there is a beautiful story of a a holy place in South India it is known as Bhadrachalam so Bhadrachalam has uh, there was a forest there and in the forest there was a beautiful deity of Lord Ram which was being worshipped by a, a lady who was a forest dweller and she was worshipping those deities in a very simple way within her means so the local uh, governor he came there and he saw and he was very impressed by seeing the lady's devotion and the lady looked at him and said hey these deities are so beautiful they are not supposed to be worshipped here the Sita Ram Lakshman deities they must be worshipped by you in a beautiful temple you create a beautiful temple and worship nicely and this governor looked at her and said his name was Ram Das he said how will I worship and I don't have means he said hey you are governor you have all the wealth at your disposal and he said I don't have any budgets for that she said some of the tax money instead of giving to the king just use it build a temple it's a good cause who will find out and he thought yeah, that's a good idea so you actually instead of giving the entire money in tax use some of that and build a temple and the king who was from another religion he found out and he became very furious and put Ramdas behind jail and when Ramdas was in jail he was very angry with whom with Ram and Ramdas started you know screaming within the jail frustrated my dear Lord what is this who built the temple for you Dasharat Maharaj or what I am the one who built the temple who offered the beautiful dress was it Janak Maharaj no it was me who gave the beautiful you know ornaments to you was it from your relatives connected to Sita Devi no it was me I have done so much for you and this is what I am getting that I am being thrown into this jail like this in a helpless state if this is the condition of those who serve you like this I wonder what will happen to others so Lord Ram took it very seriously and he appeared in the dream of that king and then he started smashing the king left and right in the dream and told the king release Ramdas immediately and you made a big blunder and big mistake he has done it for my temple if you don't do that I'll destroy you the king who was from a different religion he came running to Ramdas and then he immediately gives an order to release him and the king comes personally to release Ramdas Ramdas is looking at the king and said why are you releasing me and he said you know this Ram and Lakshman came in my dream both threatened me with arrows to destroy me and they said if I don't release you they will kill me and Ramdas again starts screaming at Lord Ram my dear Lord I am the one doing bhakti and you are appearing in his dream <laughs> what is going on so then this temple is very very famous because the Lord personally manifests to reciprocate with the devotee's love when the devotee is totally aligned with the Lord and his desires the Lord becomes fully satisfied and fully in a mood to reciprocate with the devotee and when Shri Rupa and Sanatana Goswami approach Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that is what they are offering in their prayer Mlecha jati mlecha sevi kori mlecha karma go brahmana drohe sange amara sangam he said my dear lord a person becomes elevated in consciousness or degraded in consciousness because of three things one's birth one's association and one's occupation and when you extrapolate over millions of lifetimes the level of degradation can be immense and therefore sanskaras or rituals which transform the consciousness are useful to transform the consciousness from the degradation which has happened as a result of birth 
occupation and association. And so they look at Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and say to him, Jagai madai hoite, koti koti gun, adhama patita prabhu amiduijan. We are more degraded than Jagai and madai and we can only be transformed in your association when you give us shelter. And so they look at Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and say, Mora karma mora hate golae bandhiya ku vishaya vishta garthe diya che philaya. They say that we cannot blame anyone for our degradation because we have made the wrong choices and tied a noose around our neck and we are drowning in this poo, in this pit of sense gratification. And therefore, my dear Lord, only you can touch us and transform our consciousness. That transformation of consciousness is possible when you give us your association and your mercy. And they say, Vaman yai che chand dhorite chahe kore tai che evan cha more uthaye antare My dear Lord, you are like the moon, we are like the dwarf. The dwarf can never touch the moon, but the moon shine can always touch and impact the dwarf. And therefore your mercy, your grace can touch us and transform us. And so Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepts Rupa and Sanatan. And so when he accepts them, he initiates them. And through that initiation process, he creates that transformation. Srila Prabhupada established International Society for Krishna Consciousness for this one single purpose. And what is that purpose? The purpose of Vaishnava Sangha is to create association. When there is association of the devotees, there are the six loving exchanges. And when the six loving exchanges happen, there is transformation. And that transformation of consciousness is basically in the transformation of intention. Because when we need to perform our duty diligently, diligent duty can be only be performed with diligence. Duties can be performed with diligence only under the influence of three principles. First, our identity has to be clear. If there is no clarity in our identity, we can get confused. When there is clarity in identity, then there can be purity in our intention. And therefore the four levels of intention are described by Thakur Bhakti Vinod that intention by fear is under the influence of Tamogun. Intention by desire is under the influence of Rajogun. And the intention with a sense of selfless service is in the mode of goodness. And the highest is intention caused by love. Where there is scarcity, impediment, discomfort and unhappiness in a relationship, still the desire to serve selflessly continues. The aspiration is to come to that level of love. And so when there is clarity in identity, there is purity in intention, then there is consistency in action. And therefore, inconsistency in action is caused because of lack of clarity or confusion in identity and impurity in intention. And the whole idea of association is to provide that transformation. That is basically the idea of samskara or transforming one's consciousness by giving association. Srila Prabhupada was with his disciples in Kolkata. And he had just started the life membership program and he was visiting homes, making people devotees like members. And it was the first time the Western devotees had come to you know, India and they were feeding a lot of prasadam. And the devotees were eating the prasadam, they were full but still the host was feeding more. Have more, have more. And they were, they were saying, no, no, enough, enough. But in India it's a different equation. Even if you say enough, but you know, it's the kind of reciprocation. And they fed so much, when they came back to the temple in 3C Alberta, one of the brahmacharis had a hand on his stomach and he was saying, Srila Prabhupada, my stomach is aching. Prabhupada said, yes, you had 25 puris. 
And he looked at Prabhupada and said, how do you know? Prabhupada said, I was counting. <laughs> Another brahmachari was laughing at him. Prabhupada said, you don't laugh, you had 16. <laughs> and Prabhupada said, when we are visiting these homes, it is natural that out of hospitality towards the sadhus in India, they will feed. But our purpose of going there is to provide association, sangha. And through that association, there is transformation. When that transformation happens, that's where the sanskaras change. The sanskaras change means the source of our pleasure no longer is in the senses, but the source of our pleasure is in selfless service. So when we change the source of where we seek pleasure from, from sense gratification to selfless service, that's how the transformation happens. And that cuts across all kinds of activities, including procreation, including having childbirth and bringing a soul into this world with the consciousness, not for sense gratification, but consciousness by which that soul can become a servant of Krishna. And that's what, you know, when Raghunath Das Goswami meets Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's saying, Rakshake rahata muikke mone chuti bao, ke mone prabhuru sange nila chale jao. When I will come with you, my dear Lord, when I will accompany you to nila chal to puri, and Lord Chaitanya looks at him and says, Sthir hoya ghar jaho na hao baatul, krame krame paya loka bhava sindhukul. Do not be agitated, remain steady, focus, on transforming your consciousness from within. How? Antare nishtha karabahya loka vyavahar ochire koribe krishna tomara uddhar You focus on meditating on Krishna within. Develop your faith in Krishna within. Externally you may engage in various activities. But our process is not in changing action. Our process is in changing our consciousness and intention and therefore you do that and then brindabane asi jabe asi ba nila chale tabe tumi ama pasha asi ha kona chale when i come back from brindavan that time you come by using some trick and raghunath das goswami is thinking what will change i am under con constant guard the guards are not going to change how will anything change so Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is telling him that do not try to extrapolate every situation in the future because when Krishna wants to bring you close to him, he has his own ways. Se chale se kale Krishna spurabe tomare Krishna kripa jare tare ke rakhite pare If Krishna has decided to bring someone close, no power can stop. And therefore, allow Krishna also to use his intelligence and understand how he will bring you closer to him. And therefore, the process of Krishna consciousness is basically dependent on how we submit to the will of the Lord, align ourselves with the will of the Lord, become aware of the will of the Lord and aspire to serve the will of the Lord in the association of devotees. And this Vaishnava Sangha is the most powerful medium for transformation of intention. That's the purpose. The purpose of spirituality is nothing but transformation of our intention. And therefore, we should not find fault in that agent of transformation, which is the Vaishnava Sangha. And so Kaviraj Goswami says, Vaishnava Vaishnavera guna grahi na dekhaye dosh Koi mane vakke kore Vaishnava santosh Let us be guna grahi Let us be like bees Seeking the good qualities in the association Na dekhaye dosh Let us ignore the faults in that association Kai with body Mane with mind Vakke with words Kare Vaishnava santosh Let us try to please and serve the Vaishnavas So that by the pleasure of the Vaishnavas the blessings of Krishna manifests and when Krishna is pleased and Krishna does gives his blessings then the heart gets transformed and that's exactly our aspiration the transformation of intention is the ultimate 
impact expected from samskaras and that's the samskaras we are trying to Im imbibe and inculcate in our life through this Vaishnava Sangha here at LA all of you are setting up such a sterling example of association of devotees you know in a country where not so many Hindus are there still Srila Prabhupada came and established Krishna consciousness I am quoting Chaitanya Charitamrit, but that Chaitanya Charitamrit got published, printed and you know distributed primarily from Los Angeles from this very street the birthplace of the English Chaitanya Charitamrita and you are right here so today India ISKCON is booming like anything but we should not forget that the Lakshmi for setting up the temples in India came from the West, came from book distribution the Juhu temple you know was primarily funded from Los Angeles and uh, at that time when Srila Prabhupada was there till 1977 he had more than 5500 disciples but hardly 20 Indian disciples and there were 108 temples hardly 5 temples in India Calcutta, Mayapur, Vrindavan, Mumbai and Hyderabad that's it now India is booming in ISKCON is booming in India we have 10,000 students across India chanting 16 rounds we have like 4 million meals of plates of prasadam being distributed every single day several hundred thousands of devotees every month we are having two or three temples being opened we just opened a temple in Thane last month in Mumbai and within a month we, are, we got a footfall of 200,000 people weekly we are getting 70,000 to 100,000 people you know that is the kind of response which ISKCON is getting in India but all of that was possible because of the foundation laid by Srila Prabhupada and Srila Prabhupada's disciples especially from America who came to different parts of the world and established ISKCON and all of you came and established ISKCON in India when Prabhupada was praying here in front of Sri Sri Rukmini Dwarkadish and Rukmini Dwarkadish spoke to Srila Prabhupada in 1969 go to India and established ISKCON so I sit here as a representative of the thousands and thousands of devotees from India ISKCON in India who are grateful for all the sacrifice for all the service which all of the Srila Prabhupada's disciples have performed in service to his divine grace so thank you all very much Hare Krishna thank you so much Prabhu Arshita Prabhu has a comment. Hi, Bob Prabhu. Thank you very much for this wonderful presentation. Very inspiring. One question. Did that guy comply with your request? Did he give you a few drops from the salt ocean? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't give to me, but he gave to some other ISKCON. <laughs> so something came. <laughs> but after some time. <laughs> yes, so Prabhu, you want to? Thank you for a wonderful class. Um, it almost matched the one you did in Mayapur. <laughs> but uh, just just on, on this point here about Srila Prabhupada starting in America, um, yes, it, it was, I recall that in the very early days, how difficult it was in, in the temples, meaning that so many people would come and try to just stop the Krishna conscious movement if you were just like a little temple like in Denver, Colorado, you were just surrounded by people that just literally disliked you. And it was very difficult to even go outside and even try to chant your japa for fear of someone maybe doing something to you. And people actually attacking the temple on several occasions. So you just reminded me of that when you mentioned that and what it was like and how strong the devotees were to maintain uh, this most foreign type of religion in America which was so a little bit more Christian in those days than yeah. it is today but uh, it, it's really amazing being here in New Dwarka because you can step outside your apartment and you can just scream Krishna's name as loud as you like and no one will <laughs> protest so it, it's a big difference and uh, I, I, I'm 
very thankful that you said something about that because it's very important. Yes. But at the same time, we have to thank people like yourself and all the devotees in India that are doing such an amazing job in spreading the Krishna conscious movement. And all of you are such a wonderful example that it inspires us here in America by what you're accomplishing and how you're accomplishing it and, and how intellectual you are and so such a wonderful preacher. Uh, this is a, a, a product that Prabhupada wanted. So thank you very much and thank the you. devotees of India. Thank you very much. I also wanted to invite uh, or welcome my friend Krishna Bhakta Prabhu here. You can raise your hand. Krishna Bhakta Prabhu is a leader in Maharashtra and um, he's been practicing Krishna consciousness for many years. He's a regional secretary right now for one of the places there nice. and he's visiting here also. And also my friend Jay, who's here after a long time. So like to yes. welcome Jay. Yes, Ganesham Priya Prabhu. <laughs> he's preaching in his way, Krishna consciousness, <laughs> becoming extremely famous. And, and so many people are running to him for so much information about right. well, wellness in life. So yes, thank you, Ganesham Prabhu. Thank you. Haribo. Also, I wanted to end by mentioning that uh, on 22nd January, we had the Sri Ram Temple opening in Ayodhya. It was a historic occasion because, you know, I joined the ashram 30 years ago and I've seen the kind of lukewarm response to sadhus over the last several decades. But during this event, only 7,000 people were invited, 3,000 were sadhus from different organizations. And every sadhu was given a police escort and a place to stay wow. and repeated reminders and follow up. So everybody was made, made to feel very special. And after the opening, practically every day in Ayodhya is like a Kumbh Mela. So if any of you are planning to visit India, please do visit this uh, Ayodhya temple. And I would say the history in India would be divided in two sections, one before the Ram temple opening, one after. I, I agree. Because That's post true. the opening of this Ram temple, yeah. the, the crowds in our temples, even within ISKCON, has gone up by 5x and 7x. Even the Thane temple which we opened, it's now known as Mini Ayodhya, Mini Ram Temple Ayodhya. So therefore, there is a wave within India, especially of the youth. So the number of youth visiting our temple has gone up by six to seven times in the last few months and especially post-COVID. So therefore, definitely the many, many decades of preaching and distribution of Bhagavad Gita and all of that has had its role to play, but especially now, the things are very favorable for Krishna consciousness in India. And we feel even more grateful for all that foundational efforts which were put by the pioneers in this process. So just, I thought I'll give a general invite to anybody when you're visiting India, apart from Mayapur and Vrindavan, do also stop over at Ayodhya. Jai Sri Ram. Jai Sri Ram. Thank you very much. Haribo.